God bless you. God is good. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing here in the broad. These are, these are times of restoration. These are historical times. And uh, uh, God is just such a just a, such a blessing. There's just so much going on around the world. And we thank God for such a time as this, but He have us here today. And, um, as, as it has always been our, our, our course of life and discourse, even though I'm expressing greetings since July the 12th of the year of our Lord, 2020, to our YouTube, to social media, and all the other media devices. Um, it's all about Jesus. And so, as I'm expressing the things that God has placed on my heart to each of you today, I, I, I pray that no one takes that in the, in the, in the context of a, an Amway meeting, you know, a Mary Kay, or something like that, because we need businesses, and, and, and so no disrespect to Mary Kay, Amway, and all that. I'm just simply saying that I'm not sharing with you in, in the natural sense, out of my flesh. I'm, I'm praying to be used by the Holy Spirit, and so if the delivery appears to be a little bit, a, a certain kind of way, if you've gotten to custom that over the years, then you need to know Jim the preacher and Jim the man, or the friend. There is a difference, Jim the preacher and Jim the man. And um, that's something you have to discover. I, I can't teach that to you. And uh, um, But the Holy Spirit come upon all of you when you're talking to somebody about Jesus. You say, well, I don't know a lot about what I'm doing. I just, have you ever had somebody in your classroom or anybody that was going rogue and, and you just told them, you need Jesus? That was the most powerful thing you could say in, 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 the, uh, in eternal life is to share the King, King Jesus. And so the devil's plan is to try to make you feel like you have no value, no worth, you have no substance, and then create a lie of no hope in you. He's a liar, and the Bible says he's been the father of a liar, been a liar since the very beginning, and, his, and even in his creative abilities, he, he, he went against the commandments of God and began to draw the worship to himself. He was created to worship. Alright? And uh, he was beautiful. Alright? But he got the, got the big head so I said, well, I, hey, it's all about me. And so it wasn't you. When you told your classmate, your friend, your neighbor, who was suicidal or uh, depressed, um, that you need Jesus, that was the Holy Spirit in you. <laughs> You will be in control by God. So don't ever let the devil tell you, well, Lord, you ain't never used me before. Young men and young ladies and men and women of God, just remember back. Remember when. Remember when. I was I was driving yesterday or the day before yesterday, and I was thinking about who I had led to the Lord this morning, which I have. <laughs> All right, so you, you need to practice when you get in the presence of people and they have a teachable spirit or they're willing to listen. You need to ask them, do you know Jesus? Ask You'll be surprised if people say, well, I used to be out of Let me tell you about his grace. I said, let me lead you to the Lord. Let me be right here in the, in the last three weeks. They come off. They work. They do things on the, on the grounds. They come off the streets. And you got to do it. Amen. You got to do it. You have to, you have to uh, I, I heard somebody talking about the fire guy. And I got a lot of fires out there, but fire I'm talking about is a refining fire. It refines us. Amen. It makes us new. Oh, anyway, faith in God, our key to eternal security, people. The Word of God has a lot to say about the different degrees of faith in the Bible. Uh, our Christian faith is based on God's promises, not on feelings, people, uh, or things that are visible. Now, faith is a substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things what? Not seen. So great faith holds fast regardless of what appears on the outside. God did a great faith within you because when your neighbor and your family member, even your spouse, when we got saved at different times in our walk, they only saw the outside, but they began to hear what was going on on the inside. Amen? Yeah. <clears throat> they say, well, that, that's a person that didn't, they even got religious. No, we didn't get religious. We became Christian. <laughs> We became, I'm not going to keep you long. I try to keep the messages down to 30 minutes, uh, 35 minutes during the uh, 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 pandemic and, out, and out around the world. Um, and hopefully we can send messages out to encourage the, the church to go forward, to, to 
continuing our battles. We're continuing our battles. And uh, I ask that some of you that would be interested, I pray all would be, be honest about it, as Paul would say, uh, get involved in some of the week routines too. We already got people scheduled for this week for prayer and counseling. So that, that is no excuse. He who the Son made free is free indeed. And I love working for God. Genesis, the 12 chapters is where I'm going for a beginning text. I'm probably going to use Genesis 12 and back and forth to Genesis 12 and Romans 4. And I want to talk a little bit about the patriarch Abraham. Abraham, as you know, was faithful. Woo, he was faithful. I mean, he believed God, amen? Uh, because of his faithfulness, we are saved, the Bible says, by grace, God's unmerited favor. And the Bible says that Abraham is the father of us all. Amen. God quickened our ears and give us ears to hear. God quickened our eyes and give us eyes to see. In other words, the, get us to understand your precepts, your principles, your types, your pitches, your shadows. <clears throat> We want to move past the literal understanding, Lord God. We want, to, we want to hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. All of us have destiny in us. All of us have, have, have vision in us. And we all have a responsibility, not to ourselves, but to the kingdom. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So I'm hoping we can hear what I'm not able to understand myself even to say. Because I'm just trusting God that He'll just make it happen. There have been times, I don't know about you, that I've been teaching... And things came out, I said, I never would have said that. <laughs> I never would have said that at that time, especially uh, times of, that were things of exhortation, or there may have been things that dealt with authority and leadership. Never had even had a preconceived idea it was going to come out. I said, well, perfect, because if I thought about it, I thought I was guilty. <laughs> Praise God. So God is so good, amen? And we want to try to hear, we want to hear faith, and we want to know a little bit about faith today in these few minutes that we get together. But we want to be able to see it in, this, in the fullness thereof. Not how I receive, but how can I give? And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about giving of your ministry. That is first and foremost. I'm certain that that was on Abraham's mind when God made the promises to him, not about what he was going to get or get straight in his life, but what he could get straight for others' lives. In other words, how can I please God? Abraham, in uh, Genesis, the 12th chapter, four verses here. Let, let me turn there to people. I'm, I'm steady talking and, and sharing with you, but I have never even got to the scriptures yet. Um, Genesis, the 12th chapter, verses uh, 1 through 4. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy comfort zone, out of your kingdom. Get out of that country, and from your kindred, and from your father's house unto a land. I like this. I like the eye wheels of God because you know the devil got his own eye wheels. You can find them, I think, in Isaiah 14 or 18 chapter. I have to go ahead and look at it. Where Satan said, I will be like the most high. But God says, I will. People, everything Jesus said in the New Testament related to you and I was he said, I came to do the will of who? The Father. Will is a very powerful thing. So when we say, what I won't do, that is in complete rebellion to what God says He wants us to do. We are here to do the will of the Father. But the enemy wants to mesmerize the will of the Father, and He wants to show us our own pains. But God wants us to take our pains to the cross so He can show us the vision He has for our ministry. We have work to do for the kingdom, people. It's bigger than us, it's bigger than you. We're just passing through. You will, you will be a memory uh, to us and to the, and to the seeds and to our children. We, we will be a memory. What will be remembered? They stood for the kingdom. Their writing stood for the kingdom. Their pre preaching stood for the kingdom. And as we heard in the song, my home, my children, their children, their children. You, that's got to be down in here. Amen. I mean, that's got to be deep down in here. That. I mean, that's what faith is. Faith, faith stirs up in here. God is faith. God is love. We need to know all of the attributes of God. We can't just say, God hid. God answers. <laughs> God also do. Do those who will, he, that, that will allow him to do it through him. Or through them. Amen? Amen. So that's why I want to kind of get this message at today. It's so important. Look at our babies, all y'all. here from Woodbury. God bless you. Come on in, children. 
Amen. And so here in Genesis 12, 1, uh, it says, And the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. When God called Abraham, he obeyed. Now let's parallel our, our life with the life of Abraham. In fact, let's parallel our life with the life of Jesus Christ. Amen? Abraham, the father of faith, the father that nourished in grace, we receive uh, 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 unmerited favor from God. As you study Abraham's walk with God, you will find in Genesis as well as in the in Romans, the chapters four and in chapter five, where it talks about justification, that Abraham wavered not in the call upon his life, not in the call upon his life. I have, I cannot be sidetracked, and you must not allow the enemy to sidetrack and delay your ministries and delay what God wants to do to you and through you on your own personal issue. You must give them to God. You must, and you must rest. You must give them to God. They, the, the, the details and, and all of those things, they will get in the way. They will get in the way of what God has for you. You must do this. I practice this daily in my life. It is a monster. But it, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The enemy is coming in with a stronghold. But you don't need to be in no fort and be locked down. This ain't the Alamo. We free. Amen. He who the Son made free is free indeed. So you got to come out of this thing. You can do this. How long did it take for everyone who got saved now in my, that's hearing my voice, that's listening to my voice around the nation, around the world? When you gave your life to Jesus, how long did it take to get saved? Was it a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second when you, <laughs> or did you feel it going on as long as a sport game lasts or a Super Bowl? No. Instantaneous, when you met those conditions, repent and believe the gospel. Jesus came into you. Because the devil wants you to think, I ain't ready, I'm gonna be all there. I, I, I've been doing this too long. I'm, I'm buried in this sin. I'm buried in my act and my fleet. This is where I am, I can't change. That's a lie. That is a lie. It is it is a it is a, a false instrument of deception. And of course Satan was the, was the god of worship. So he knew all the instruments, all the hawks was on his body. And all that you see, and he just got you dancing around here. He just, just like a puppet. He's got you like that, thank you. And, and we tell you, audience that's listening on video, that when, when God comes in your heart, it's an instantaneous move. It, your old man, he dies. He is crucified. I can stop right now. That's good news. We can just talk about, everybody can come up and testify how they got saved, and you won't find anybody to tell you it was drug out over six weeks. <laughs> they might have got drug out over six weeks, but when God came in, you can't measure it in time. You just know. John 3. You just know? Well, Abraham heard from God and he simply believed the promise of God. He wavered not at the call upon his life. He wavered not. That is something, you know, it's a little difference when God is moving on your life and people are telling you, I believe God's called you to ministry. I believe God's called you to be a teacher. I believe God's called you to witness. Now, that's true. All of us are called to be teachers, witnesses. Forth. But when, when you hear from God, when He touches your spirit, man, and you know that you know that you know you that God can save you, you don't have to ask God what I'm supposed to do. You're supposed to say, Thank you for doing this to me. Just thank you for saving me. That's all that matters at this point. That's all that matters, people. You know, in Romans, the fourth chapter, verse 18, this is what the Bible says. Romans the Fourth chapter, verse 8, it says, Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute, impute sin. Excuse me. Come at this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcised also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for his righteousness. He obeyed God. He was fully persuaded. 
How was he being reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Abraham received the sign, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness, of faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the fall of all them that believe. People, Abraham received it by faith, the circumcision of the heart. This is where we walk at today as men and women of God. God circumcises our heart. He crucifies that old nature and gives us a new heart. That's good news. Verse 18 says this, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, uh-oh, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. And Wow, I like this part. Giving glory to God. And this is one of the most powerful words here. And being fully persuaded and what, and, uh, that what he had promised, he was able to perform that. Wow, that's powerful. I, I want to go to something else so bad because I, I'm kind of getting ahead of God on this whole read these scriptures. I'm telling you, Peter. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. I am in love with this verse. And being fully persuaded that what he promised, what God had promised Abraham, he was able also to perform it. People, you and I ought to be fully persuaded at the promises of God. It is written. We need to be fully persuaded. I am totally convinced. Now, the world is out there. There are many translations out there. There are, there are many people that are, uh, have different opinions. But God says that the unction, the Holy Spirit, would bring all truth to you. And your spirit will bear witness with his spirit that you are children of God. You will know the truth that will make you free. What, what everyone else is doing, I, I, I have great diversification of studies, trust me. I have lots of friends from all over the world with all kinds of different things that they do. I mean, it's something to walk with prophets or prophetess and apostles and things. And they, and they have different degrees of light and understanding. But guess what? I'm still Brother Jim. I'm still Brother Jim. In other words, I can still talk to my father. My father can still talk to me. I have no inconsistencies or insecurities about who I am. I don't have to measure up to another man's gift. I just got to be faithful in what I have. I, I, it took a long time to get there, people. Because we all face, we all, we all face idolatry. We all face uh, peer pressure. We, we all face. Uh, I had pimples when I was growing up, so you had to face pimples. You know what I mean? Uh, or whatever your hair grow all funny. You know, you know what I'm talking about. So we all face that growing up, and that gets seated in us. But, but when Jesus showed up on the throne in my heart, when Jesus showed up on the throne, things started to change. Well, how about this? I started to change. <laughs> Because he was changing me. Amen? So, when Abraham was fully persuaded, he was not acting on his desires in faith or his position in the kingdom of God, but he was acting and responding to the ministry of God that God had chosen for him to carry out. Now, consider this. Many today, many believers today, cannot see the forest for the trees. I know this is a very common cliche, but it has some truth here. In other words, they place more emphasis upon details, their personal comforts, uh, and measure their needs, and not the ministry and the calling of God upon their lives. God wants you to see the big picture and not focus on the needs or details so you can be fully persuaded in Him and what He's called you to do. He'll take care of our needs, our provisions, our hell and all those things are just all they are they are directly related to our walk with him but can we put our eyes on what he's calling us to do for him as opposed to what we're asking him to do for us when when when, when, when it comes to him doing for, for, for me it is so i am so pretty fully persuaded i'm still trying to hear what do you want me to do for you i'm swayed that way 99.9 percent I don't know how to convey that to you to get you to live that in your life. And I'm totally there, so I'm going, going, boom. 
it's hard to understand that. I, I'm fully swayed there. Because if I don't accomplish what he told me to accomplish, then I will, I, will, I will miss some of the important things that God would have to do. And I will never know the merit or, or the demerits of what I didn't do. Because God, in heaven, God is not there to, to, uh, if, uh, to bring correction as he does here in this earthly message. When we go to heaven, we are in glory. <laughs> so he will be saying, ah, you could have led this one to the Lord, but you didn't do that. that that's over with. That part is being done now yeah, yeah. in my life. That part is being done now. So I act like now. I act like I should be in heaven because I am seated, standing, and walking in heavenly places. And I'm seated, standing, and walking in earthly places. So you have to know your raw priesthood of who you are. You have to enter into the heavenlies, and you need to stay up there. Down here, your spirit is in the body. It's supposed to be carrying on God's business, not always God taking your about business. He's going to take you your business if you can focus your business to his business first. Amen. Woo! Woo! Now, I ain't been listening to no cowboys and Indian shows. That's just a, just a natural. Woo! It wasn't like I saw them on TV. <laughs> Okay, a little bit of you for the young <laughs> Well, the one who truly believes and has faith will act on God's word with perfect assurance that his request will be granted. But this can be twofold, I repeat. Acting on God and believing with an assurance that all things will be granted. It's a twofold thing. One may be seeking God for something which requires faith. At the same time, the Lord may be directing that person to do something for him. Which one will mesmerize you the most? I'm going to be, I'm going to be drawn to what my father wants more than what I want. What do you do when people go, when you go to the hospital and people have been given life-ending diagnosis and they sit up there smile at you and, and they just want to make sure their house is in order, even though God may raise them up. I've seen him raise up a bunch, right? Having you too, some have gone on, right? God give us enough victories to keep us going, some defeats to keep us honest. He the one in charge. How can you bring hope to when you don't have understand hope in your life? You must consider the Lord's commissions in your lives, people, every one of you, and not only your desires. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. He loves us. God loves us. He truly loves us. Abraham was already a leader in his land when God called him out in Genesis 12, chapter, verses 1 through 5a. He was already a leader. He was a king. He was a king in his own country, Hiram, with an inheritance from his father, Terah. Now, if you go back and you study the scriptures in context, you will see and come from your father's house and uh, from the family, a kindred, and to, uh, out of that territory. I mean, so in other words, it breaks it all down. Just come out of here, you know. And so but God told him to get out of the country from his kindred families and from his father's house, which was his inheritance, unto a land that God said, I'm going to show you. Now, people will take this literally sometimes and think they're supposed to be leaving church. <laughs> Or uh, take a ministry. So when God is working on the end of us today, outside, God is manifesting Abraham walk by faith so he can show you how he wants to walk in you. Why did Jesus say, um, suffer the children to come to me? If they, they don't, the mother and father won't obey, just leave them, come on with me. Uh, let the bed, dead bear the bed, dead. Come on, Abraham. Come on, Abraham. If he's a father of faith, I mean, He's trying to talk to us. I like to read history. I love history. Um, um, I'm not even going to get into that. We take too much time. The, the, the creation and where all this come from and how we end up with Abraham and how we end up with the Bible. Um, and, and this segment in, in history. Who were the great dynasty? Who was in charge uh, basically in, in the world? What great powers existed? It wasn't the two. He's he, he so proud of up in, in Egypt, north and south, until they combined water. And so this is the time and the season that this is taking place. Well, Abraham did not express any details about his personal comforts or needs when God says, I'm calling. <laughs> he just obeyed. 
Wow, that's powerful, people. Because we got people, who, you know, you know, want to exchange with God like he's a cash register. Open. I want two dollars. Close. Open. Close. Open. And close. But here he is, a king. Got all the father's inheritance. His father had already moved down there some years before. So Abraham was in charge. Now, if you go back and study the scripture, you'll find in context the things happened. Adrian, he had soldiers. I mean, he had people to work with him. He had slaves. He, he had everything. This is so powerful, people. He was fully persuaded, for he was completely believed. He completely believed the promise of God. We have to get to the point where we completely believe the promise of God. We got to move past the hermeneutics, the uh, charisma. The um, um, let me just put, be, be frank about it. Man worship, okay? I know we love each other, and I, I know I have a certain way to live, but but my wife is different. Carol is different. Uh, sister Felicia is different. Sister Felicia, but we all deliver differently, um, and uh, so God never, he, he uses He uses that, uh, but we're never to emulate anyone else. We are to find who we are in the word of God. <laughs> we need to find who we are because you don't have to do it like I do it, you know. <laughs> and then when I go to other places, those of you that travel, it depends on what the audience that I'm delivering the message to. I have to adjust the message by the Holy Spirit because the message has got to be about what? Communication. We have to be able to relate to the crowd. I, I would go to a, um, um, a Catholic group and, and, and deliver uh, uh, in, in a uh, uh, in, in a way that I couldn't reach the people, uh, they they like uh, parables, metaphors. Uh, Jesus spoke in riddles, metaphors, and parables. They have a bit of humor. Uh, a lot of scripture laid up on the New Testament. I could do the same thing, but keep it straight and narrow, God's way and God's way only. I don't have to go in there and say I'm the great deliverer. Because if just one person come out and say, hey. Think about it. I really think God's telling me to leave here. I might not address that at that hour, but I remember I was in college once, Bible college, 20 some years ago, and this couple was in there. And uh, the teacher was teaching on something that was questionable theology, Bam uh, Bambi theology. And it was just a statement that the teacher made, and it was totally. To the spirit field, it was totally like benign. It was like you could feel that iron, you know, go right to the side, like, you know. All right, but, but to the regular person, it was, I believe that. So I didn't say that. I'm sitting in the class, too. I might have been the oldest one in there, but I was sitting in there, too. And, uh, and I knew the discipline of studies, because the children have to do it, too. They have to attend classes, and I did not agree with they to pass their lessons. I had to do the same thing. See where the gospel and where the teaching's got to be, it's got to be brought down the home. You can't stay up there on cloud nine because you know how to be a great orator or an orator, depending on how you pronounce it. And so after the teach, after the class, the young man came out and his wife, and they just respect me because I guess my quietness, my submission, my attentiveness to class, just things like that. I'm sure they wouldn't have. I'm sure if I didn't qualify on just basic things that they could observe, that they would have came to me. They would have went to somebody they thought was accountable. And uh, and so the young man said, Pastor Jim, I don't mean no harm. I'm not, I'm not trying to be messing up like that. But the teacher said so and so, so and so. Is that correct? I say, I'll tell you what. I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to ask you a question. He said, okay. I said, so I answered the question according to the scripture. And I said, now, why don't you come fellowship on Wednesday night and we can hear more about the grace of God, the ministry of Jesus. The young man and his wife became members here. We got pictures of them. This was 20-some years ago. Moved to Georgia. Had two babies. And deliverers like left and right. I mean, they got some delivery for them. Six foot six. He went to school, the same school that brother Mickey Hamilton and Ann, as some of you know from Houston, Texas, my friend that went on with me for Lord at 213, they both played for the same school down in Walker. And Mickey got tight with him because the guy had his little football jersey and, and Mickey was 6'6. 
And so all, God had put all that together. So when we took him to Houston, he was right there with family. He was right there with people in the same high school. You know, just, just perfect scenario, perfect scenario. And that came out of just being at the right place at the right time. Oh, I ain't going to no Bible college. I ain't. Well, I go get away. Well, I can get him in the hospitals, in the taxi cabs. I don't ride no on the bus. So I don't have no choice when I became a Christian. I mean, if God says, if you won't listen to me and I told you to get on that bus, then watch this. Next thing I know, the truck is broken. <laughs> But I don't think about God doing it. I need somebody to order, and a year later, somebody testifies. I said, Ooh, God, forgive me. I didn't never give you credit for that. <laughs> I told you what I was going to do. But, you know, we forget that our arrogance, you know. You know, arrogance has been around so long. And so God is trying to get us to live. i got to move past it. I want to try to get out of here in 20 some minutes. And we're getting close to that time. So on Sundays, we try to shorten the services. And, uh, well, how about this? Each of you, the Lord has sent to this ministry, to this territory, to fulfill his calling and commands. And in 1 Corinthians 12, chapter verse 18, we don't have an issue with this, but there are people around the country and around the world might be asking God, am I sitting here? Where should I go? I have I have phone ministry this week. And uh, uh, some of the things I asked him, and I'm not being religious about where you fellowship, things like that, what's your experience with God. And I'm very careful how I say it because I don't want them to think religious because they got some people will tell you it ain't about the building, it ain't about the, they got a planned script for you, you know. So I'm not trying to get that, I'm not trying to get that out, I'm just trying to figure out how. It's like one person I was ministering to two weeks ago on the phone, uh, the supervisor's after him, uh, bad, rocky relationship with the dad. Got saved in 210, ain't been in church since 212, and the church had a man break up. <laughs> so I, I'm starting to get a picture, right? All right, so I'm not telling them anything that they're doing wrong. I'm just trying to get an assessment so I can say, give them the fight chance, a fighting chance to make it. Who am I to know um, who would be the next uh, Pastor Ray uh, Jackson or the next uh, Calvin Caldwell uh, that will fit these ranks or the ranks of some other ministry? Who am I to select who I will minister to? Who am I to select who I want? I'm not going to serve when my God has called me and I, it's clear what his calling is on my life because I can see all, but I'm not looking, what everybody else is not doing, but then I have to take an inventory of myself. I'm not even doing it, except on my schedule. See, so you have to break your schedule. It's, it's hard knowing I might be out of town in the morning. Tuesday, I got a session already here. Tuesday night, I got another session. Some people are already scheduled for Friday. They don't even know I don't schedule every Friday. They texted me saying, I'll be there next Friday. I never said I'm going to be there next Friday. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 18, but now had God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it had pleased him. Therefore, the question is, how might we together fulfill our destiny in this territory, in this land God has set, or sent us to dwell in, the local church. By believing God's promises and being fully persuaded, first of all, we have to be fully persuaded. So you can't say, I'm, I'm here, I'm not there, I'm not going there, or I'm getting out of there, I'm talking to the choir here. Because <laughs> we love church, we love authority, and authority is a, a unique subject in itself, but it's implied, because Jesus is our authority. Um, but if you are questioning where you are or where you should be, you need to understand that it's the Holy Spirit that put, uh, put you where God wants you to be, as, as it pleased Him, not as you are comfortable. The most uncomfortable positions in my life is what changed my life many years ago in ministry. It was not the, the easy go thing uh, or the comfortability, it was the, 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 the tests and the trials and even when I was misunderstood, if I said something, the pastor might have misunderstood it, I didn't have to stand there and say, well, no, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> Just where he was. Or oh, she missed it, she missed it. I learned how to eat it. I learned how to take it. Uh, the corrections, the, the, the disciplines, most of them, I would say 95% of them warranted. I'm not saying none of them warranted. Some of them came because of what I said. See, when you, when you, when you talk, 
and, 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 you, and, you, and you're talking to the coach. I coached ball for quite a few years. I coached Little League, Poly League. So I understand coaching a little bit. So I did coach. So if I got all the students down there, and I said, if anybody got any questions, and I, I spent the whole time on offense, all right, and, uh, and the questions come on the defense, well, I didn't eliminate the questions in my, in, my, in my delivery because I didn't cover both ends. I just covered offense. So I should get defense. I shouldn't be shutting them down saying, well, uh, we're not talking about that today. And so you have to get into God's word and ask God to, to help you to be able to understand all facets of him. Be concerned about our needs, but all we concerned about is calling on our life. That must be balanced, people. It must be balanced. So, how important do you think faith is? Now, I'm going to read some scriptures. But I'm going to move a little fast, in a sense, for the sake of time. But it's on a video, and so you'll be able to go back and look at those verses. And the question is, how important is faith? Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 8 says, We are saved by grace through faith. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. This is unmerited favor to us. And faith is a gift of God. Ephesians 2 8. How important is faith? Romans, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 2. The Bible says, and you need to go there. You really need to go there. This is a place you can get hung up there and just stay there for a long time. Because the Bible says, we are justified by faith. Praise God. Every born again person has faith. But we must learn to activate our faith. We must study the teachings, the doctrines of God pertaining to our justification, people. All that Jesus' precious blood purchased for us. I have been made whole through Christ. I have been justified by my Father. We must study the doctrines of justification. In James, the fifth chapter, how important faith is, verse 15, the Bible says we are healed by faith. We are For Jesus Christ is the great physician. He is our healer, our deliverer, people. And in 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 3 through 5, you will find that the Lord says we are kept by faith. Oh, that's so powerful. God keeps me by faith. The power of God comes by faith. God's keeping power is motivate, motivated by your faith. The power of God comes by faith. God's keeping power is motivated by your faith. I trust in God. If you allow the lies of Satan to come and begin stealing your faith, he is still in your power. He is still in your authority to walk fully as a Christ Jesus body member. So don't let the enemy steal your power by taking your faith, people. Don't let him do it. We are kept by faith. Acts, the second chapter, verse 36 through 38, Acts 2, 36, we are baptized into the Holy Spirit by faith. Oh, that is so important, people, because baptism into the Holy Spirit is a work of God. It is supernatural. There is no, no, no duplication of this. No one can duplicate this. This is a work of God. People, you cannot come to God and then claim that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit by works. No. It is a supernatural work of God. Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Wow, that's powerful in itself. How important is faith? People, the Bible has... New Testament has many scriptures on top of scripture, on top of scriptures that deal with how God wants us to respond to Him by faith. Our life is centered in God's Word, people, or it should be. The Word of God has been personally written to you. Uh oh. <laughs> on the front, I see King James, I see Holy Bible. All right. And then right below that, well, you can't see it in actual physical print. It says, for Jim Lamb. Oh. I mean, people would think you're narcissistic, you know, because they all understand. <laughs> but in the spirit, I'm saying, for Jim Lamb. This is my manner. This is my life. 
This is our life, people. All of your, all of, all of your mathematics, all of your history, all of your science, all oh, they came out of here. You say, well, I, I studied another book. No, it all came out of here, except for the devil stuff. Now, the devil had his own. But the God's people knew how to know the difference because they could discern right from wrong. But you know, knowing how to discern good from evil, it's not enough. You have to be able to discern good from good. They got a lot of good things to have you called out of here before you over there. You should have been in the church that night. Or you should have been doing something for the ministry. I was tired. I was invited to what about the uh, Pico Gallo? Yeah, but anybody tried to call it? But I mean, you know, so you gotta make sure you that you put in God first. You know, because people's lives are standing in the way. And, and, and uh, a lot of ministers, a lot of leaders, um, uh, potentially can be uh, casualties. Uh, depart a little early because too much weight and burdens is not being diversified, not because the help is not there, but because the helpers are not helping. In some places, you know. Then we have a lot, we have a lot of problems, respiratory problems and throat problems. If you're up there, huh? Hey, man, that's all you still have to That's a lot of terror. That's a lot of work to get your heart in. Come on, wisdom. I'm not saying we can't use it. Because I don't teach like this if I'm on the street. If I'm on the street, you got 50 people out there and they dragging it apart. I'm going to be talking, Jesus! I'm going to sing a song. Oh, that yeah, preacher can't sing. But I got their attention. Sometimes not being able to sing and get somebody's attention. They got some people can sing and get your attention, though, right? God is so good. God is so good. God's word demonstrates that his people may experience trials. We may experience testings in our walk. It's called the walk of faith. But the result is God's grace in our life. His unmerited favor that keeps us and keeps us all. Abraham and Sarah had testings as well. In fact, God promised Abraham his seed, Isaac. Of course, Sarah lost. Isaac's name means lawful. It was 25 years later before God fulfilled that promise of a son was given to Abraham and Sarah. Not because they did something wrong. Not because they couldn't have him the next week. It was God's perfect timing for what he wanted to do historically. It was God's perfect timing. You can't say, well, I, I might have got it earlier if I'd have done this earlier. No, 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 no. While you, while you were debating about allowing God to work for you, God was using that to work so to show you your flesh so you could learn how to become a disciple, denying self, bearing my cross every day and following Jesus. You don't go back and talk about what it ain't. You go, you go forward. God says, I have forgotten, I have for, for, forgotten, excuse me, I'm using broken English. I have forgiven your sins as far as they are from the east to the west. I just got it all piled up in y'all understand. This was just so good to me. I was saying, this is all oh, people. We all going to be blessed this morning. God loves us so much. <laughs> I was just excited by this word this morning. Amen? Well, there are several different expressions of faith that is mentioned in the New Testament. Uh, there are several scriptures that express questionable faith or where there may be a need to strengthen one's faith. And I'm going to provide some of the scriptures, but for the video, I'm just going to give you the scripture and uh, the verse, and maybe quote some of the, the verse there that, that deals with this. And, and, and I pray that you would consider researching these Bible uh, scriptures and the stories that cause these different types of faith to manifest surrounding these questionable times during Jesus' public ministry. Jesus says in Mark, the fourth chapter, verse 40, How is it you have no faith? And then in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 30, O oh, ye of little faith. And then in Luke, the 17th chapter, verse 5, Lord, increase in our faith. And then in Matthew, the 17th chapter, verse 20, Jesus said, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, and one that's always very true to my heart, and there are far, far too many for us to cover today in today's services, but I just wanted to hit on some of the different things that were questionable during Jesus' public ministry. Jesus said in Luke, the 18th chapter, verse 8, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man returned, 
When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Oh, this is one that stays with me 24 7. Jesus is not speaking about when he finds religion. He is speaking about his body, the justified. For we are justified by our faith in God. God has given us the ministry of justification. He has blessed us. Do the studies in, in uh, Romans, the fourth chapter and fifth chapter. We are justified through Jesus Christ. The Bible has a lot to say about how we respond to various situations in our daily lives. You know, we got to deal with this every day. Everybody's dealing with something, including myself. Do you respond with no faith, little faith, weak faith? Well, great faith. I got some good news about this too also. We each deal with various degrees of faith daily in our lives. Some have great faith for healing, but little faith when it comes to driving after north. We must apply God's word to our entire walk. To the faithful, God appeared faithful. To the pure, he appeared pure. To the, those that are not pure, he doesn't appear pure, yet he's pure. God shall strengthen your faith as long as you stay in the faith. In the faith. In the faith. Important. Don't give back to the devil the valuable ground that was won at your salvation and henceforth. He who the Son makes free is free indeed. Don't give up an ounce of your gained spiritual grounds back to the devil. Don't allow a confession that is contrary with the Word of God to come out of your mouth and not be dealt with if it does come out of your mouth. We must have the, the gift of repentance and the conviction of sin operating in our life, and that's only possible if we have faith in God so He can give us power, the power of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father to show us the things in our life that needs to change. God loves His creation. He loves us people. He loves us people. God loves us. So, as I come to a conclusion in today's sessions, Think about Hebrews 11, chapter, verse 1. What does the word faith mean? The strong concordance says that faith means belief, faithfulness, reliability, trust, confidence, firm persuasion, assurance, or firm conviction. Now, there's those that have a firm conviction and are fully persuaded, but they have not the word. I'm not talking about that. You, Jesus said, my word and my spirit are one. So we can't say that we are walking in by faith and we're trusting God and we don't give God not even a few minutes of time in studying His scriptures. How difficult can it be for God to be just exploding revelations in my heart on today's message? Because this is for me. How difficult can it be and then to spend I don't know how long studying last night is something completely different. I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with dynasties, stone age, prehistoric age, history age. I'm dealing with history. I'm dealing with all of the, I'm just all other stuff. And then I put myself down and now I got, now it's prayer time. Lord, <laughs> you know, and I don't, I want to go back here, but I won't go back. I say, I'll wait until the morning, start fresh. My mind is on. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere between 8 and 10,000 B.C. All right? Then 26,000 B.C. Then back up, you know. And so I'm studying to show myself a clue. I'm learning. I want, to, I want to get this inside of me. Because I know what moves demons. Faith in God in the name of Jesus. Not just because you know a little bit of it. They got to see that I got, I got something on the inside. They want to get on the outside. want to work in a person's life. And I know the difference when it ain't working. I know when it, when, I, when it hasn't been fueled right, when it hasn't been ministered to right. Uh, and, uh, but I understand faith and, 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 and walking by faith in God. Hebrews 11 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is belief in God and in God's promises, being fully persuaded. I'm almost finished. 
The Greek word for faith in, the, in this verse is pistos, P-I-S-T-O-S. And it means, I believe on divine truth. I totally, wholly believe the Holy Bible, the Word of God. Now, if you got an issue with that, then Jesus is your deliverer. He is, he is your deliverer. I, I make no judgments against you. Because I, I had different beliefs too. I was raised one way, christened another way, baptized another way, sprinkled another way. So I had a lot of time for people to poison the spiritual God. But when the real when the real king showed up, King Jesus, I bowed. Oh. I didn't walk up to the preacher and say, I'm saved. Right, what can I do for your church? <laughs> oh, I was on the back road. You might find this very challenging. I'm on the back road right now. Because even though I might be sounding like somebody about to uh, destroy the whole kingdom of Satan, and I am, by the grace of God, it's not coupled with humility at the same time because I would want to injure one of God's people. It's, it's always there. When, when you don't have that, serial killers have that, that demon. They just don't, they don't understand why. <laughs> Boom. They're not, they don't, they don't understand. They, they don't have that uh, empathy. Now, I would like to share God's word of assurance to our viewers and to those in the present. The love of God to each of you present, those watching the, the, the teaching on YouTube, social media, and other media outlets in America and around the world. And I, I can I say this is this is really a pleasure too, because I know that the church, uh, the many of the body is not able to, to assimilate in, in large masses, and we understand that. It, Certainly, we, we're doing the same. We have uh, quite a number of people that are not, not here today, but they are here in the spirit. So we, we're using Zoom, we're using YouTube, uh, we're using the telephone, we're still ministry, people can still come in for one-on-one -on -one counseling and deliver. So the church goes on. <laughs> for all of us here in the United States of America and around the world, I encourage you, Bind, loot, <coughs> bind the enemy, bind the territorial strongmen of infirmities in your territories, and let us together release the kingdom of God. Together, that men will repent and believe the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Jesus is still in control. <laughs> he is our God. He's a great God, and he's a good God. And he's, doing, he's still doing a great work. A great work. As we move from this transition to the next transition, from this glory to the next glory, so many wonderful testimonies will come out in months and years to come. Oh, the enemy thinks he's had his day. But we, we, if we could do an assessment of the numbers that have come to know Jesus, woo! the Bible makes it very clear. That the, Bible, that the gospel spread, greatly spread, under, when it was under the greatest persecution. Oh, oh, man, so many people saved. So many people crying out. We got to get ready, people. We got to get ready. Because the people wanted to hear. They're going to want to know more about God. They're going to be heard from grandma and from the neighbor. And from the person that was popping their hospital room, they came over and they said, Jesus loves you. Wasn't even the preacher. But they had the preacher's word. And they was raised up and they tried to tell their families. The person said, Gee, oh, you're, you're Joe, what is the word about that? <laughs> but I know that they was popping it. It's all over the world. This is going on. We just hear a little bit testimony because the airways are crowded right now to prepare some Sunday morning services, Wednesday. So we're not hearing a lot of the testimonies unless you know somebody. <sighs> Romans. I want to go there. I got a word for everybody here. Throughout the seven continents of the world. God said this to us in Romans 8.35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecutions, famines, nakedness, perils, the sword? It is written, as it is written, for thy name 
sake, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor the height, nor the depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You are a child of a king, King Jesus. You are a raw priesthood. Eternal life resides in each of you. God loves you. He loves all of his creation throughout the seven continents of the world. He is not a respecter of person. He is bouncing it off radio waves, bouncing it off tin cans way deep in China, way deep in red China, deep in North Korea. You bouncing off radio frequencies and you're hearing the message. That ain't by any accident. Just want you to know God is in control. So I bless all of you. I bless our congregation this day in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And I hope that you be encouraged. Have faith in God. He has faith in you. <laughs> Amen. May God bless you.